Hi everyone, this is Damien Pelaez and I'm going to be going over functional behavior assessment. My disclaimer is ABA Exam Academy is a group of individuals working together to help others ace the test. These meetings are meant to have active discussions to collaborate, ask questions and have helpful suggestions to better understand the BACB 4th edition task, task list. So because of this, it's important for all of you to um, verify the accuracy of the information that we provide so that you, success, you could successfully prepare for the BCBA exam. So some ethical considerations that we follow and we suggest you guys to follow as well is that we refrain from sharing any BCBA test questions, um, any, we don't share any type of paid resources or any type of identifiable client information. And if you are sharing an open resources, please make sure to give credit to the author. All right, so first I'm gonna have an announcement. Then I'm going to be going over uh, what is an FBA and what methods fall under it. Uh, finally, I am going to be going over direct assessment. So the section only of direct assessment and it's three variation, variations of descriptive analysis. Throughout all of that, I'm going to have some true and false questions. And then at the end, I'm going to have mock questions that we're going to be going over and we're going to be breaking down. Are you guys ready to start? Good. All right. So for my announcement for today is that um, we're going to be going, we're going to be having a test taking intensive course. This is our second course. Um, the first one went very well. I was very happy with um, everybody's feedback and how everything went. Um, so this is our second course. We're going to make it even better. This one specifically on test taking skills and it's going to be on February 22nd at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a total of two hours. So it's going to be from 1 to 3 p.m. And it's gonna be conducted by Yenis Bell Hernandez, which is a BCABA. Um, she's gonna be giving you um, suggestions and tips to ace the test that we have gathered through our time um, studying and figuring out the pattern of those that have passed, um, what they've used, what they've done. We're gonna share all of that with you. And we are also gonna to give tons and tons of mock questions. We're gonna break them, break them down, give explanations, give feedback, answer your questions, all of that. Um, so if you guys wanna sign up, sign up as soon as possible. We only have 12 spots. This is why we call it intensive. It's because we wanna make sure that we um, give you guys time to ask questions and to provide um, time for you guys so that you can master the information. Okay, awesome. So, all right, my reference for today, I mostly use the Cooper book and occasionally did use the uh, Mayer um, behavior analysis for lasting change. Um, but I used it at times just to double check my information, but I mostly use um, everything from directly from the Cooper book. All right, so I'm gonna get started. If anybody wants to answer this question, we can, but I'm going to read it directly from the Cooper book. Um, what is a functional behavior assessment? So this is, it's, it's called an FBA. So it's another, uh, an acronym for functional behavior assessment is FBA. And it enables hypotheses about the relations among specific types of environmental events and behaviors. It is designed to obtain information about the purpose so which is known as the purpose is the function, a behavior serves for that specific person. And this is on page 501 of the Cooper book. Um, so the, the FBA has three, um, three different sections and we're gonna break that down now. But if anybody has any questions, this is just the um, definition from the Cooper book. Does anybody have any questions before I move on? All right, so with that said, I made a nice little chart for you guys so that you guys can visualize, visualize what I just read directly from the Cooper book. So like I said, a functional behavior assessment is the actual umbrella 
So it's that assessment that we use to gather information so we can find that function or that purpose to those behaviors of concern. So they are divided into sections. So first we have indirect and direct, and then we have under those two, we have indirect assessment, which is directly under indirect, and then we have descriptive assessment and functional analysis, which is under direct. Does anybody want to tell me the four different types of indirect assessments? Does anybody know? Don't be shy, guys. You can call them out. Write it on the chat. Interviews, checklists, surveys, and questionnaires. Yeah, I'm missing one. You did really good, though. Rating skills? It starts with an I. Interviews. Interviews, good. So yeah, rating scales, interview, questionnaires, checklist, perfect. Great job, guys. All right, so how about under descriptive assessment? Yep, it's direct observation, but under direct observation, what is under that? So descriptive assessment is an AKA for direct observation. A whole interval of time sampling? No, it's, I'll give you guys a hint. There, okay, scatter plot. I see someone wrote scatter plot on there on the chat. And then the other two start with ABC. ABC what? So the ABC data sheet that we use, do you know the name for that data sheet? ABC narrative? Yeah, one is ABC narrative and the other one is ABC what? Continuous, very good. I have someone on the chat wrote continuous. So. ABC narrative recording, which is the one we're used to. Most of us, when we write ABC data, we write ABC narrative. Then we have ABC continuous recording. And then finally, we have scatter plot. Nice job, guys. Very good. All right. Then next to that, we have the functional analysis. What are the four things we look for when we do a functional analysis? So when we do a functional analysis, we're manipulating the variables. The, def, the different um, test conditions. Uh-huh. And what are those called? Um, I have some, someone on the chat wrote escape. That's one. What were you going to say? Uh, attention. OK, attention's another one. What else? OK, control is another one. And I'm missing one more. Play is, the, is an AKA for control. Alone. Alone, perfect. Very, very good. Nice job, guys. Contingent escape, contingent attention, alone, and control. Nice, you guys hit them. All right, so we're gonna go first to our first true and false questions. So I always give true and false first because true and false are, they're easier, obviously, because you only have two answer choices. But um, I try to make it the questions a little bit more simple. Um, then at the end, we're going to have the mock questions, which are more realistic to the exam. OK? All right, so a sequence analysis and a pattern analysis are part of a descriptive assessment, true or false? All right, someone said false. I need two more. One more false. False. And one more false, all right. So the answer is true. 
The reason it is true is because a sequence analysis and a pattern analysis are AKAs, and they are AKAs for ABC narrative recording and scatter plot. So I cannot stress enough how important it is to study AKAs. I, I know and I also have heard from others that there are tons of AKAs on the exam. So to study, study, study your AKAs. All right, let's move on. All right, descriptive assessment. Like we said, under the functional behavior assessment, is there, there's a section that's descriptive assessment, which is also known as direct observation. Um, we have three variations of descriptive analysis. We mentioned them before. Does anybody want to repeat them? They're the ones that I said that start with ABC. ABC narrative. Mm -hmm. ABC narrative, another one. ABC, ABC continuous. Good. And then the last one that falls under that. There were three under descriptive. A scatter plot. Scatter plot. Perfect. So ABC continuous recording, ABC narrative recording, and scatter plot. Nice job. And I repeat myself over and over again so you guys can learn the information okay just want to make sure so i won't become annoying <laughs> all right all right so here i have an image just in case you guys never seen if you guys have that's great but if you've never seen it on page 507 of the cooper book you will see this image this is an actual abc continuous recording it has it separate separated in three different columns one section for antecedent, one for behavior, and one for consequence that we know is very similar to the narrative that we're very used to. But as you can see, it's broken down into check, check boxes. Okay, so the definition for it in the Cooper book is the occurrence of a specified event is marked on the data sheet using partial interval momentary time sampling or frequency recording. So you're doing that using those methods at the same time, okay? And then also the target environmental events, antecedent and consequence are recorded whenever they occur, regardless of whether the problem behavior occurred with it. So what that means is like you see right here on row one, row two, row three, and row four, you see that there's a mark on tantrum. But when you get to row five, Row and row seven, there's no mark. So it is not required for there to be a behavior, even if there's an antecedent and a consequence and no behavior, you're still going to mark it. Okay. So an example I like to give is if I if I have a child playing with Legos, and I remove those Legos, so that would be considered preferred activity removed. So I go under antecedent, I put a checkbox, a check mark under preferred activity removed. I take away the Legos. There's no tantrum. So a tantrum does not occur because I removed the Legos. So you do not mark it off. And then um, because of that, I diverted my attention or the child diverted their attention. You get me? So even though the, the behavior didn't occur, you're still gonna mark that the antecedent that normally happens occurred and the consequence that normally happens occurred. Because we're trying to see when the behavior occurs and when it doesn't. When with ABC narrative, you're only doing it when the behavior occurs. Does anybody have any questions about continuous? Can you go sure, to the go. previous slide, please? Yeah, sure. One second.
This one? The one for the, the previous to that one. The one with the AKA. Sorry. This one? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Do you have any questions about this one? No, I just. You want to see it? Note and I was halfway. Yeah, no problem. No problem. And remember that these um, videos are also posted on YouTube. So I, I always wait about 24 hours and I post them on YouTube for you guys to have, you know, you guys can watch them as much as you want. You guys can pause the videos and write whatever you need to write. So it's no hurry. You're not going to lose the video. You can just go and watch it on YouTube. All right, let me know when you're ready. I'm done, thanks. Mm -hmm, no problem. All right, so then we're gonna move on to ABC narrative. So this is the one we're normally used to writing, um, where we also have the three columns, antecedent, behavior, and consequence. Okay, but here we're going to write out details about what happened. Okay, so the definition from Cooper is It's a form of descriptive assessment that differs from continuous recording in that data is collected only when the behavior of interest occurs. You see, like we talked in the other one, the behavior of interest does not have to occur. And in this one, it does have to occur. Okay. And then it says, um, when the behavior of interest are observed and the recording is open-ended. So that means when you write open-ended is you're writing details about it. You're not just writing a uh, removal task or no, you're writing what was said, who said it, when they said it, um, what happened, who was involved, you know, things like that. Um, so here's a perfect example. So for this first one, it says, adult attention diverted to another student, denied access to Nintendo by teacher. And then an example is told no when he asked if he could play it. That was for antecedent. Behavior, yelled that teacher. He said, in quotation marks, that's not fair. Why do you hate me? And then for the, consequ the consequence, he was told to calm down. Okay? So you see it's like a narration that the word ABC narrative is considered like a narration. You're actually writing down like a story, okay? Um, another thing that was also told in um, Cooper is that because of all of this, um, it is considered less time consuming to write this data than continuous. It's because you don't have to look at everything all the time. You just have to look at when the behavior occurred, you have to look at, okay, what happened before and what happened after, okay? Does anybody have any questions about this one? Okay. Brittany, are you good? You good? Okay. All right. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to scatter plot. All right, and I wasn't able to find a scatter plot image on the Cooper book. I really wanted to because I like that resource more. So I found these on Pinterest. There were many, um, but I like these the most out of all the ones that I saw. So you're going to find information, um, definition, and all of that in the Cooper book, page 509. And the definition for scatter plot is. It's a procedure for recording the extent to which a target behavior occurs more often at the particular times than others. A scatter plot involves dividing the day into blocks of time. All right, so I've only used this um, data sheet one time. And when I used it, I divided the day in blocks. So I used it at a school. And I divided it like normally circle time is in the morning. Then uh, we have, you know, some schools do recess after circle time, whatever. All of the blocks, so the blocks are like 30 minutes, 30, 40 minute increments, something like that. And then we would do like um, literacy and math and things like that. So everything one after the other. Um, some are divided in, fit in time, where, t where time is, you show time. So this one's 15 minutes. And I think this one's like 30, yeah, 730 to 759, 8, 8 to 829. Um, some of them are 
a whole month. You see, like this one is 10 days. This one is longer. Um, but it, it really is to find out that pattern that we're looking for um, in the specific times of day. So if the behavior happens more in the morning than in the afternoon, maybe you should go in the morning instead of the afternoon. Or maybe you should send an RBT to go in the morning and he doesn't need nobody in the afternoon. Or maybe you should collect more data in the morning instead of the afternoon. So there's a lot of our variables are going on at the same time, but um, this is gonna help you find those patterns. Does anybody have any questions? All right. It's the time to ask if you have any questions. All right. Okay. All right. So I have another true and false question. It says a BCBA was training an RBT how to use both ABC continuous recording and ABC narrative recording. The BCBA told the RBT that the only difference between both is that one is done by writing out a description of the event and the other is just marking a check mark on the, about the event. Both will be used only when the target behavior occurs. Did the BCBA explain the difference correctly, true or false? False. Okay. False. False. Let me check the chat really quick. Okay, false, false, false. Everybody's saying false. And the answer is false. So does somebody want to explain why it's false? It's false because in your continuous recording, you still want to provide the um provide data even if the behavior didn't happen perfect that is uh, that is exactly what i wanted you guys to learn if you knew it awesome but if you didn't I, that's what i wanted to emphasize on because when i first started studying back in january of this year i didn't even know that all i knew was that one was check marks and the other one was writing it down um but the fact that with continuous ABC continuous, you still have to mark it even if the behavior doesn't occur is, is important. It's something important to know. So here where it says in the question, all of this is extra. But right here where it says both will be used only when the target behavior occurs. And then it says, did the BCBA explain the difference correctly? No, she did not. Good job. You guys did awesome. Very good. Okay. All right, so someone on the chat wrote, can we, use, can we also use scatterplots to find out if some behaviors occur in some settings more than others? Um, so in schools, I, no, I've never heard of it in different settings, but in schools, we can figure out if with, like if they're changing teachers, we can figure out is the behavior occurring more than one teacher than another. So like with middle school or with like fifth grade, that like you're like almost at the end of elementary, they start transitioning from one teacher to the other. Maybe they have a homeroom teacher and then they have science teacher and specials. Then you can figure out, oh, they do it more with a specials teacher or they do it more with the science teacher or maybe they take advantage of their homeroom teacher and they do well with their science teacher. So like that, yes, but actually moving from one setting to the other, like in the home, in the community, in the school, no. Does that answer your question? Okay, perfect. Yep, no problem. All right, so here I have a chart um, I have the three of them divided um, with the advantages and limitations. All right, so I'm going to read out ABC continuous recording, the advantages and limitations. If someone can help me out to read 
um, narrative recording and someone else do scatter plot, that would be awesome. So I can take a break from reading so much. <laughs> um, but I'm going to read these out first and then I'll take any volunteers. All right. So ABC continuous recording. The advantages are precise measures, calculates conditional probabilities, provides correlations with environment and useful contextual information. And the limitations are antecedent and consequences do not reliably proceed and follow problem behavior, making correlations difficult to detect. All right, so who wants to help out uh, with narrative recording? I'll take it. All right, awesome. Um, so ABC narrative recording, the advantages are less time consuming than continuous. The limitations are utility in identifying behavioral function is not established may yield false positive because of data being collected only when the behavior occurs and reliability may be low perfect thank you so much what's your name lily lily thank you for your help that was great all right does anybody else want to do scatter plot don't be shy we're here in a wonderful great environment helping each other out i can take scatter plot perfect thank you so much scatter plots advantages identifies time periods of behaviors. It's useful for finding the time of day when ABC assessments can be conducted. The limitations, scatter plots are subjective, does not determine the function of the behavior, and does not offer any replacement behaviors. Perfect, thank you so much, Juanita. Thank you for everything, guys. You're, You're very, welcome. Very helpful. All right, so does anybody have any questions about this? I have some mock questions that I'm gonna ask that are related to this. But if you have any questions, it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, if you guys wanna write it down, you're good to write it down. But also remember that we're on YouTube, so you can go over there and um, pause the video and write anything down that you want to. All right, so another true and false question. A scatter plot is most popular in the classroom setting because of being able to divide the day into blocks of time to eventually find a pattern of the behaviors that are occurring. True or false? True. True. Two for true. true. Three for true. On the chat, I have true. Perfect. Yes, the answer is true. And the reason it's true is because we're looking at dividing the day into blocks of time, which is exactly what the definition says. Perfect. That was just extra information that I put on the top because it is very popular in the classroom. But the more important information is looking at what is the actual definition and it is dividing the day into blocks of time. All right, so ready for some mock questions? Yes. Awesome. Yes. All right. So these questions were created by me. I have gotten a lot better at writing questions, but remember, I'm not a professional. So, you know, but they are, they are pretty good. I'm not a lie. <laughs> I've got, I've come a long way since I started writing questions. Okay. All right. First question. Which of the following is a limitation for a scatter plot? A, may yield false positives because of data being collected only when behavior occurs. B, antecedent and consequences do not reliably proceed and follow problem behavior, making correlations difficult to detect. C, subjective and does not determine the function of behavior. Or D, provides correlations with environment and useful contextual information. C. 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 All right, I have two Cs on the chat, two in verbal uh, vocal. Yes, C. So we're looking at the word limitation and we're focusing on scatter plot. Everything else that does not match that is thrown away. Perfect. You guys did exactly what you had to do. All right. A BCBA is observing Johnny, a three year old boy that has an autism spectrum disorder. The BCBA is collecting ABC data and sees him pull his sister's hair. When she turns around, she immediately yells at him, Ah, stop! and he starts to laugh. What is the function of the hair pulling behavior? A, escape, B, attention, C, access, or D, cannot determine? D. D. 
I have, I think it's one for B, two, one for D, and two for D. All right, I really want to hear this. D. 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 So why did you guys choose D? It is correct, but I just want to know, what were you guys thinking? There wasn't enough data to provide the correct antecedent. Exactly. I at first thought it was B for attention, but right. as she stated, there wasn't enough information here to say that it that it was. Right. It was so huge. Right. Yeah, it, it gave uh, the feeling of being guessing or assuming, which is not safe. Yeah. And I love that you guys looked at that because I thought that you guys were going to go. I've had a lot of people before say, oh, it's attention because you're looking at that is ABC data being collected. But the main thing here is that when you're doing ABC data, you're finding what? Are you finding the function or you're in the hypothesis? Hypothesis. Hypothesis. Yeah. Hypothesis. Perfect. And on the question, it says, what is the function? It doesn't say, what is the hypothesis? or the hypothetical function, you know? All right, perfect, nice job, guys. All right, what is the only FBA method that confirms a hypothesis? A, indirect assessment, B, descriptive assessment, C, experimental analysis, or D, functional behavior assessment? D. D. Two for D. I have two for D on the chat. All right. Ready? All right. Wow. So why, why is it C? It is C because experimental analysis is an AKA for functional analysis. Okay. And always when we're looking at these questions, we have to choose the more detailed answer. Okay. So you guys were on the right track because you guys picked FBA, but you guys probably didn't know that experimental analysis was an AKA for functional analysis. Yeah, I didn't. I was looking for functional analysis. Correct. And I couldn't find it, so I didn't even answer. Yeah, so that's, that's why I wanted to put these questions out there for you guys, so you guys can see how important it is to know your AKAs. All right. All right, next question. What are the four test conditions of a functional analysis? Ready? A, contingent attention, automatic escape and play condition. B, control condition, alone, con alone, contingent escape and contingent attention. C, escape, attention, automatic and tangible. Or D, alone, tangible, contingent attention and escape. C. C. C, two C's, one C on the chat, all right. The answer is B. It is B because they are not asking for the four functions, functions. of behavior. They are asking for the four test conditions. And the four test conditions are different from the four functions. All right, does everyone understand? Do you guys have any questions? No questions, we're just going too fast. Ah, it's okay. All right. Larry is the BCBA to a new client, Mark. On the first visit to the home, Larry asked the mother to describe Mark's behavior and any deficits. He also asked if there is anything in the environment that might be associated with those behaviors. This scenario can be an example of all of the following except a, indirect assessment, B, parent interview, C, direct descriptive FBA, or D, structured behavioral interviews? C. I have two for C on the chat, two for C on person, and the answer C. is C. Very good. All right, so the answer is C because it says all of the following except. So you have to look for the one that is? not correct all the rest are interviews okay because an, an indirect assessment is the umbrella of what is an interview okay so this is correct this is correct and this one is an aka for interview also 
What are the two types of analog assessments? A, functional analysis and ABC narrative recording. B, indirect assessment and functional analysis. C, extended functional analysis and brief functional analysis. Or D, functional behavior assessment and extended functional analysis. A. All right, I have one C. for A in the chat and one for A in person. I have another C. And the answer is C. And it's because analog assessment is an AKA for functional analysis. And that is the end of my meeting. Thank you guys for everything. You guys did awesome. Um, if you guys need anything else, go to our website, abaexamacademy.com. And thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.